ever notice how sometimes the most powerful and influential people in the world, the ones literally shaping our future, can have the most radically opposing views on the most fundamental things? It's fascinating, isn't it? Something that's really caught my attention lately, and I think we need to talk about it, is this story that emerged from the electric vehicle world. But honestly, go way beyond cars or batteries. It's about vision about betting big, and about who truly understands what's coming next. So picture the scene. On one side, you have Elon Musk, the guy who's become synonymous with Tesla, with rockets, with X, formerly Twitter, with everything, disruptive, and for many, a genius. On the other side, you have Robin Zhang. Now, his name might not be as familiar to most people, but in the world of energy and electric vehicles, he is an absolute titan. He's the CEO of CATL, a Chinese company that, to put it in perspective, is the largest EV battery manufacturer on the planet. They are the silent giants powering a huge chunk of the EV revolution. And what happens when these two meet? Well, according to Robin Zhang, he looked at Tesla's famous 4680 batteries, those batteries Elon Musk has been betting all his chips on, the ones he promised would be a game changer that would revolutionize EV production and cost. And he said, without mincing words, that they are doomed to fail. He went even further, stating they will never succeed. Just think about that for a second. The world's largest battery maker looking at a bet from one of the world's biggest innovators and saying that's not going to work. That's quite a statement, isn't it? This conversation, or rather this declaration from Zhang, reportedly happened during a meeting with Elon Musk himself in Beijing back in April 2024. And what's even more intriguing is that according to Zhang, he was there debating battery technology with Musk, and Musk simply remained silent? Silent? For a guy like Elon Musk, he's just known for big vocal, for defending his ideas tooth and nail, for tweeting at any hour of the day or night. His silence in the situation is at the very least deafening. What do you think was going through his mind? Was he absorbing, thinking, or simply had no retort to such a direct criticism? Honestly, I think Musk's silence in this context speaks volumes. It's almost as if he knew there was an uncomfortable truth there or perhaps the argument wasn't worth having at that moment. Now, if you're enjoying this conversation and want to stay in the loop on stories like this, which uncover the behind the scenes of the tech and business world, do yourself a favor and consider subscribing to the channel. We always bring these deeper dives going beyond the headlines so you can understand what's really going on. Back to Robin Zhang. He's not just some random critic. He's the founder and chairman of CATL. And when he speaks, the battery industry listens. He didn't just criticize Tesla's 4680 batteries, he also pointed out the reasons, technical challenges and high costs. For him, these are the main obstacles. And this is where it gets even more personal. Zhang was blunt, saying that Elon Musk, quote, doesn't know how to make a battery. He argued that Musk's expertise lies in chips, software, hardware, and mechanical engineering, but not in electrochemistry. That's a pretty heavy accusation, isn't it? It's like saying a renowned chef can design an incredible restaurant, but can't actually cook. And to some extent, there's truth to that. Elon Musk is a visionary, a systems engineer, an entrepreneur who can gather talent and resources to build things that seem impossible. He's brilliant at identifying bottlenecks, optimizing processes, and creating a grand vision. But does he truly understand the complex chemistry happening inside a battery cell? Zhang, who lives and breathes this chemistry every single day, seems to seriously doubt it. And in my view, this is a criticism we need to take seriously. It's not a gratuitous personal attack. It's an assessment from an industry expert about the depth of a competitor's technical knowledge. Think about it. CATL is the company that supplies batteries to Tesla especially for the vehicles manufactured in China using their lithium iron phosphate or LFP batteries. So Zhang isn't speaking from the outside. He's speaking as a partner, a supplier, and a competitor who knows Tesla inside and out. It's almost like a parent watching their child try something they know won't work, but the child insists. There's a fascinating complexity to this relationship. They're business partners, but also rivals in terms of technological vision. 
Despite all these scathing criticisms from Zhang, Tesla, for its part, isn't standing still. They've announced significant production of 4680 cells, reaching 100 million units by September 2024, and continue to expand their production facilities. This leads us to an interesting question. Who's right? Is Zhang being overly skeptical, or is Tesla being overly optimistic? Or could both be right, but on different timelines or with different metrics of success? This is where my opinion comes in more strongly. I believe Elon Musk has an undeniable ability to force innovation. He sets goals that seem impossible, deadlines that are unrealistic, and this, somehow, pushes his teams to achieve things that might otherwise never be achieved. Zhang himself acknowledged this, pointing out that Musk has a tendency to overpromise on timelines, which he considers a tactic to push his team. And honestly, we see this repeatedly with Tesla and Musk's other ventures. Remember full self-driving being next year for years or the Cybertruck production? He sets the bar incredibly high, and even if he doesn't hit 100% of what he promised, he usually gets to 70, 80%, and that's already more than most companies achieve. But here's the rub. This over-promising strategy might work for motivating teams and generating market hype, but it can clash with the laws of physics and chemistry. And that's where Robin Zhang, with his deep expertise in electrochemistry, steps in. He's saying that no matter how motivated Tesla's team is or how brilliant Elon Musk is at software and hardware, battery chemistry has its own inherent limits and challenges. You can't just wish a battery to be cheaper and more efficient if the fundamental science behind it doesn't allow for it, or if the costs of mass production are prohibitive. Think of the analogy of building a house. Elon Musk is the visionary architect who designs a futuristic mansion with incredible technologies. He's great at thinking about aesthetics, overall functionality, and how everything connects. But Robin Zhang is the structural engineer, the materials expert, who looks at the design and says, look, that beam won't support the weight of that roof, and the cost of that material you specified is simply unfeasible for building a thousand houses a day. Both are essential, but their perspectives are fundamentally different. What makes me ponder is, is Tesla, by betting so heavily on the 4680s, underestimating the complexity of mass producing such a new and ambitious battery technology? The idea behind the 4680s, a larger format with a tabless design that promises lower internal resistance and more power, is on paper brilliant. But the leap from the lab to consistent, cost-effective mass production is a chasm that many innovations fail to cross. And CATL, which already dominates mass battery production on a scale Tesla can only dream of, has a very clear understanding of these challenges. We live in an era where narrative often trumps reality. Elon Musk is a master at creating powerful narratives. He sells dreams and people buy them. But at the end of the day, physics and economics have the final say. If the 4680s can't be produced in sufficient volume with the promised quality and cost, then yes, Zhang's vision might come to fruition. And there's another point that intrigues me. Tesla uses CATL's LFP batteries in many of its cars, especially the Model 3 and Model Y manufactured in China. These are cheaper, safer batteries with a longer cycle life, albeit with lower energy density. Tesla is, in a way, admitting that CATL's technology is good enough for its volume cars. So why this insistence on the 4680s for higher-end models like the Cybertruck and the Texas-made Model Y? Is it a matter of control, of pride, of wanting to have their own technology to avoid reliance on external suppliers? I believe it's a mix of all of these. Tesla wants to be self-sufficient, and having its own battery production is a crucial step towards that. But this pursuit of self-sufficiency can come at a high cost, especially if the in-house technology isn't as efficient as that of the specialists. The truth is, the debate between Zhang and Musk highlights the different approaches and challenges in developing battery technologies for electric vehicles. On one side, we have the more pragmatic approach, focused on mass production and cost effectiveness, represented by CATL. On the other, we have the more disruptive and ambitious approach, focused on radical innovation and vertical integration, represented by Tesla. Both have their merits and their risks. 
What makes me wonder is, will the success of an electric car ultimately depend not so much on the most revolutionary battery, but rather on the most reliable, cheapest, and easiest battery to produce at scale? The history of the automotive industry is full of revolutionary technologies that never took off because they were too expensive or too difficult to mass manufacture. It's a high-stakes chess game where every technological move can cost billions of dollars, and Robin Zhang, with his declaration, has played a very strong piece on that board. He's not just criticizing Tesla, he's advocating for a philosophy of battery development that prioritizes technological maturity and mass production capability. And this leads us to a broader reflection. What truly constitutes progress? Is it the relentless pursuit of the next big innovation, even if it's incredibly difficult and expensive to implement? Or is it the optimization and democratization of existing technologies, making them accessible and efficient for the largest number of people possible? I tend to believe that true progress, in the long run, is a combination of both, but with a strong focus on accessibility and scalability. So. When you hear about Tesla's 4680 batteries or any other revolutionary technology in the future, remember this conversation between Elon Musk and Robin Zhang. Remember that behind all the hype and grand promises, there are experts who live and breathe the technology, and their opinions, even if unpopular, carry immense weight. And honestly, I think Robin Zhang has a very valid point here. The 4680s might be a part of the future, but perhaps not in the way Elon Musk envisioned, or perhaps not at the pace he promised. Time, as always, will tell who was right. But the discussion itself is a fascinating glimpse into the challenges and bets that are shaping our world.